Golden Opportunities is paid for by Elder Productions. Hello, I'm Lori Steiner. Welcome to Golden Opportunities. Today, we'll prescribe advice for what ails you. Then, your loved one needs more care than you can. Golden Opportunities is paid for by Elder Productions. Hello, I'm Lori Steiner. Welcome to Golden Opportunities. Today, we'll prescribe advice for what ails you. Then, your loved one needs more care than you can give. But how do you find the right person or place to help? We'll guide you. Do you know a senior who's a standout when it comes to volunteering? They could be honored with an award. We'll tell you how. Plus, he almost escaped justice. We'll examine an exhibit that chronicles the capture and court case of Nazi war criminal Adolf Eichmann. And changes may be coming to Medicaid. We'll update you on the latest information. It's time to get geoing, so pull up a chair and join us at our kitchen table for golden opportunities. You've noticed a few things when you visit your mom and dad. There's some food in the laundry room that really belongs in the kitchen, or they're asking the same question over and over even though you've already answered it. These signs have you worried and aware that dementia could be the diagnosis. Dr. Matthew Franz is here with actions you should take early on if it's the onset of Alzheimer's. Dr. Franz is with the Family Medicine Group in at Metro Health. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. So what do we do if these symptoms sound familiar? Yeah. And we talked last time about a lot of the symptoms of uh, Alzheimer's disease and how, how your seminal memory leaves you first, and that's your ability to do complex things. Uh, a lot of times it's, you know, it's following a recipe or cooking, and a lot of times it's directions. I know in my own case with my father, um, he went to get my mother roses for Valentine's Day and ended up in Ravenna, and we live in Parma. Oh, dear. And so... Um, you know, that's the, sometimes the, the inciting thing that brings the, the family together and says, we got to do something. Okay, so what's the first step in doing something? Well, obviously the first step is go see your doctor. And the first doctor visit or the doctor visits are extremely important. When you get to your physician, number one, you need to have, it would be good if you go with your parent or you go send the person who's going to be the primary caregiver with the parent so that they can be at the visit and ask some of the questions. And before you go, write your questions down so you have them. But when you sit down and you're talking to the doctor, you don't want to take over the conversation that your parent may be having at that time because the doctor is going to need to ask them specific questions and get a read on what their cognitive functioning is. Mm -hmm. So if you jump in there and answer every question, they're really not going to know. And you should also talk to the doctor about what their expectations are and whether there are other things that you can do and whether there's reversibility in these Alzheimer's cases. And sometimes there is. And they can go through a, you know, a good history and physical, and, and, and you can ask them questions. And if you go to a doctor and they say, just don't worry, your mom's just getting old, then you should find another doctor. Yeah, because really like you it. need somebody that can, that can work with you on these things. Okay. So what if you get the diagnosis? What's next? The next thing, and, and the important thing, is to start establishing your team or the people that you want to, to have help you with this. Um, you know, it's, it's very difficult to do on your own. Um, it's like caring for a child uh, when you have another family at home to take care of. And so you have to start establishing a team. Who in the family is going to help? How are you going to start organizing your family members so that they can, you know, somebody takes one week or somebody takes a weekend. Um, also, you want to start uh, helping them at home, uh, giving them lists. You know, lists are very good for people who have early stage Alzheimer's disease. And that's what we're talking about is, early stages, not latter stages. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe get pill bottles, pill boxes that they have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, like they sell. And things like that, where you, and you want to establish a group that's going to be the ones that are going to help 
monitor and take care of, of your loved one. Okay, well that's plan A. That's plan A. You kind of need a plan B too, right? Plan, plan B is when the wheel falls off. <laughs> and invariably the wheel always falls off. So um, we had a patient in the hospital who had broken her hip and she was the primary caregiver for her husband who had early onset Alzheimer's. Well, you know, she was in the hospital. They had no family in Cleveland, and he would wander around the hospital, and the nurses mm. were concerned. We had to get social work involved, so that they didn't develop a plan B. So if you're the primary caregiver, you need to have somebody who's going to step up if something happens, because something can happen. And step four, you have getting things in order. Right, That's right. That's hard. Yeah, yeah, and especially, it's like you're dealing with the inevitable. And... Um, this is a point in time where you need to sit down with the family member and you need to say, listen, we need to know where everything is. We need to know where birth certificates are, marriage licenses are. You need to sit down and go over insurance policies, make sure you go over the Medicare, Medicaid numbers. All those things that are extremely important that if they start getting more confused and they cannot find, you know, you're going to be stuck without that. Yeah, great so. advice. The early stages of Alzheimer's are unnerving, but they are also an opportunity to, to assist your loved one in the best ways possible. My thanks to Dr. Franz for his timely and essential advice. To learn more, call Metro Health at 216-778-7800 or log on to www.metrohealth.org. Next, a go-to guide. But first, Today, gauze and cotton are a cut above other options for seamless surgical dressings. But would you care to guess what was used before these softer solutions to help heal an open injury? We'll nail down the answer when we return. Hilltop Village Apartments is retirement living at its best. Residents enjoy a wide variety of activities and living services with all large first floor apartments private screened-in patios with beautiful park views, daily dining room meals, free laundry facilities, 24-hour staff, and so much more. Enjoy safe, comfortable independence at a very affordable price. Call today for a tour and learn how you can get your first month's rent free. Hilltop Village Apartments, retirement living at its best. When surgical saw bones operated quite a while back, sawdust was used to soak up weeping wounds. This tool bench byproduct helped build a covering over the cut, protecting the part where the patient had been punctured. Life can take us down many paths. Perhaps you've married, raised kids, and changed jobs, and you've always figured out a way to get where you need to go. But now you've hit an obstacle that may just stop you in your tracks, deciding on the best care for your aging parents. Max Compton is here with help. Max is the president of the Senior Comfort Guide. Welcome to the show. You know, for many adult children, we were just talking about early onset Alzheimer's and dementia, how to care for their parents, making those decisions is really overwhelming. Um, they don't even know where to begin, really, so where should they begin? Oh, uh, Lori, it's so important that they make the decisions and they start figuring out their information and the options very early uh, in the ongoing process of aging. Um, that's why we decided we put together a guide with all the um, options and education that a loved one uh, will have to be uh, decided um, on where to turn to. And it's so important to know that there are a lot of options out there. But and you're not alone. <laughs> you're not alone and it's just very overwhelming and it's very, very important to find the right option because that could be crucial in mom or dad's health. Right, so you put together, we have here on the table, the Senior Comfort Guide. So there it is, there's a green book and there's the blue book. So um, let's talk about some of the ways that we help out people and part of which are in these books and the first is education. Sure, so in the beginning of the book we have a list of questions when someone uh, needs uh, starts looking for options for mom, whether it's a facility or if it's a home health care company, of what the questions should be to know, uh, to know ahead of time of how to make that decision. And there's so many questions that come and up. And there's so many terms. So many terms. And, and knowing and where to put somebody, like exactly. nursing home and assisted living. So what are some of those? Well, ju just the insurance process, figuring out what's the best insurance to get the loved one on. So you don't have to use all the funds of a family member to go ahead and pay for some of the health care that your loved one might need. So 
all that information is in the beginning of our guide of all helpful tools, uh, questionnaires, um, websites, information of direction of where to go. Okay, so if we decide, let's say, assisted living seems to be the right option. After investigating the possibilities and we decide assisted living is it, how do we find out about what's out there in our area? So what we did is we created in the back of the book is a listing of all possibilities of assisted living split up in counties. So the green book that you showed before was the Cleveland and surrounding areas and the blue one uh, after much demand from the Akron area is the Akron and Canton area okay. split up with counties uh, and services. All right, so now we're looking at places. How do we know which is the best one? You know, how do we decide which is the, the best facility and the best options that are available? So a lot of times just because a facility is beautiful or has a very well-known <laughs> name, it does not mean that it is the best option. Um, it really, I, I suggest, is always calling my office. I get phone calls all all the day, all the time, every day of, they don't even know where to turn to. And what I suggest is here, take care of his four options that I could think of in your area that I think could service your mom, but always go down to the facility and ask questions. It's so important not to just take things for granted and ask and ask until you What get are some of the clear. questions? Can mom eat in her room if she's not able to get out, if she's bed bound? Could she bring in her pet that she loved, which means a lot to her? Can family members come and visit all the time? Is there a, a nurse or a doctor that comes in? How often do they come in? Those are such important questions to get answered before you make the right decision. So where can we find the Comfort Guide? So the Senior Comfort Guide is throughout Northeast Ohio and uh, every single senior center or hospital, um, all providers, healthcare, uh, whether it's home health or hospice, they all get it to their office. If they don't get it, they just call my office and it's, it's available for at no charge whatsoever. And all seniors can call my office and I could send them out as well. They're free. They're That's free. even the best part, I think. So this is the Senior Comfort Guide. It's a revealing resource for senior living and care options. To find out more, use the information that's coming up next. My thanks to Max for joining us today. Thanks so much. For more information about the Senior Comfort Guide, call 216-292-8485 or click to www.seniorcomfortguide.com. Next, who will win your nomination? Looking for places to go, things to do? Welcome to our community calendar. There'll be a bit of HGTV right here in OHIO. The Property Brothers, Drew and Jonathan Scott, will share their expertise alongside with many others at the Cleveland Home and Remodeling Expo. This renovation resource takes place March 18th through the 20th at the Convention Center of Cleveland. To hammer out the details, call 440-248. 5729 or click to www.homeandremodelingexpo.com. Seniors of a certain age are called the greatest generation, and there are good reasons for that. They have served and honored our country in many ways, and they still are. Once again this year, Medical Mutual of Ohio will honor older adults who have gone above and beyond the call of duty in volunteering their time and talents for the betterment of others in our community. Deborah Green is the Vice President and Chief Diversity Officer at Medical Mutual of Ohio, and she's here to tell us about this award presentation. Thank you, Lori, for having me. So you've been doing this honoring of senior citizens for 25 years now. I mean, that, that alone is an outstanding accomplishment for Medical Mutual. Where do these amazing seniors come from? Well, they come from around the state of Ohio. We've been doing it for 25 years, as you said. We do it here in Cleveland, Toledo, and Columbus. And what we do, we solicit organizations who have senior, senior citizens who volunteer for them. Um, the individual has to be at least 60 years of age, volunteering for at least one year for the organization, and the organization submits a nomination for them. Okay, so it was done last year because it's been done right. for 25 years. Last so year was a, a milestone at, at for us. Right. Okay, so we got some pictures, I think, from last year's. Here we go. Yeah, we had it at the Shaker Heights Country Club. Um, your own Russ Mitchell served as our MC, which he's been doing it for the last few years. But as you can see through the pictures, people come, they enjoy, they fellowship, they bring their families with them. It's all free for them. We give them lunch, a nice gift, and an award where they can celebrate with their family and the organization that nominates them. So what kind of awards are there? 
we give a bronze, a gold, a silver, and a platinum award. Mm -hmm. And we keep it a secret. Uh, they don't know which award they're going to get. We also honor several honorable mention winners as well. Okay, so how are you looking for people to nominate for this year's award contest? Well, we do have a list that we mail out solicitations, but we also would encourage people to visit our website if they'd like to nominate someone. You can't self-nominate. Oh, darn. But an organization <laughs> can certainly select to nominate someone and they can uh, visit our website or they can call us directly. Okay, so uh, I think um, we're gonna have that website up Call directly. When are the when's the deadline to get in nominations? The deadline for the statewide um, award show, which will be in May, is March 30th. Okay, so mm -hmm. they got to get on it now. Right, then. right, 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 right. And it is a wonderful event. Um, Medical Mutual is the oldest and largest insurer here in the state of Ohio. We've been here over 80 years. We believe in this community, and we do a lot to help those that live here. And a lot towards thinking that makes people want to do it. Right, right, right. It is impressive. I wish you could be there to see how proud they are, yet humble. They, they don't do it for recognition, they do mm -hmm. it because it's the right thing to do. And that's always and the best way. And you leave there encouraged and wanting to give more. All right, great, thank you. And thank you. good luck on the next 25 Thanks years. Thanks a lot. <laughs> so many organizations simply wouldn't exist without the generous volunteers who keep their doors open. And many times those volunteers turn out to be seniors. My thanks to Medical Mutual of Ohio for recognizing these selfless individuals, and my thanks to Deborah Green for introducing us to a few of them today. Thanks. Thank you, Lori. Find out more about Medical Mutual of Ohio by visiting www.medmutual.com slash go or call 1-844-606-5384. How an infamous fugitive was found. It's time to get up and go. An exercise segment on golden opportunities. Hello everybody, it's Mike Carbon from Breakout Fitness and today we're here to show you how to work the biceps in the front of the arm by doing a simple band bicep curl. You ready to go? Let's do it, all right. We have our band, so all we're gonna do is we're gonna place our arch of the foot, our right foot on the center of the band. We're gonna make sure our feet are offset so we don't lose our balance. Letting your arms hang to the side. All we're gonna do is twist and curl the bands up. Make sure that your elbows do not move. Your elbows should be stationary throughout the entire exercise. If you're alternating arms as I am, you can go ahead and just alternate to 30. Uh, if you're doing as Lori's doing over there, you can just go ahead and go to 20 because she's actually working both together. That's amazing, how you feeling? Great. Looks good. Yeah, perfect form. Good posture. You're breathing. Excellent. Keep it up. <laughs> All right, everybody. Now it's your turn to get up and go. For your copy of the exercise booklet, send $1 for postage to Golden Opportunities, 6105 Parkland Boulevard, Suite 140, Mayfield Heights, Ohio, 44124. After sending millions of innocent people to their death, Nazi officer Adolf Eichmann almost lived out his days evading capture and enjoying the life of a free man. But thankfully, justice prevailed. Jeffrey Allen is here to share the harrowing details of Eichmann's arrest and court case, which are presented in the exhibit Operation Finale, the capture and trial of Adolf Eichmann, which is now at the Waltz Museum of Jewish Heritage. Jeffrey is the education director at the museum. Welcome to the show. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. So, Operation Finale, where did that name come from? Well, Operation Finale is the code name for the effort to capture the Nazi war criminal Adolf Eichmann. And Eichmann, as you've already mentioned, uh, was a notorious Nazi war criminal, and mm -hmm. he is the man responsible for the transport of millions of innocent people to the death camps. Mm. And he, in fact, may have lived out his days comfortably under an alias in Argentina, Ricardo Clement, but fate, <laughs> a Holocaust survivor, and the Mossad, Israel's foreign intelligence service, intervened. All right. Uh, this is a world premiere exhibition, it is the it will capture the secret history behind the capture of oh Eichmann, boy. as well as chronicling the impact of the 1961 trial, which happened in Israel. And this world premiere is happening at the Malt Museum of Jewish Heritage. It is uh, in collaboration with the Mossad and with Beit Hatfusoit, the Museum of the Jewish People in Tel Aviv. Okay. So this is a, a world premiere, but there's other firsts that come along in this exhibit as well, correct? <laughs> yeah. Several firsts, several firsts. This is the first time that a great deal of this material has been declassified by the Mossad. Uh, it is the very first time that the Mossad has allowed declassified material mm -hmm. regarding one of their clandestine operations to be viewed outside 
of Israel. Wow. Uh, it's a, that's quite an amazing thing. Yeah. Uh, and it's uh, the very first time that the entire story of the capture of Eichmann as well as the impact of the trial will be told in a U.S. museum. And once it finishes its world premiere here in Cleveland, Ohio uh, in June, it will travel to Chicago and then it'll travel to museums throughout the United States. Wow. Impressive that it's here in Cleveland as the world premiere. Mm -hmm. What are visitors going to experience when they go through the exhibit? I think that people are going to be blown away. This is a 4,000 square foot multimedia mm. exhibition. There are 60 spy artifacts that have never been seen outside of Israel. Wow. There are 70 photographs, three interactives, seven films, almost <laughs> 40 minutes of film uh, that will chronicle not only Mossad agents and in interviews from the from that capture team, but the prosecution team as well and Holocaust survivors. Some of the artifacts I think that may catch people's attention, uh, you'll see ID cards, passports, license plates. These were all critical for the success of the operation. Mm -hmm. But what's really remarkable is this is a pre-digital era and all of these had to be done by hand and this is a fledgling state and it is remarkable, remarkable that the Mossad was able to pull off with such detail an amazing operation such as this to capture somebody. Wow, yeah. So what do you want people to take away from the exhibit? Well, uh, I, I think the number of things we're going to take away, you know, once they see the glass booth, for example, that Eichmann was actually sitting in during the trial, mm -hmm. that is a moment that just takes your breath away to be standing in the same room with that artifact. Uh, but I think people are going to be drawn in by the spy story. That's going to be the hook. Mm -hmm. But I think what they're really going to walk away with is the understanding that this was the watershed moment that changed the way we talk about the Holocaust. It is the first time that survivors of the Holocaust really begin to tell their stories. Uh, and this comes through in the trial. And what's remarkable is this was broadcast globally. So these stories were being brought right into our living rooms. Wow. So, and there were some things that surprised you as the exhibit was being put together, correct? Quite a few. Um, I think it serves as a warning to all of us that rem an unremarkable person such as Eichmann, so average in every way, could so easily suppress humanity and uh, begin become a part of a system that would exterminate millions. Mm. Uh, that he was... He was, uh, so it's, it was a high school dropout, for example. Uh, he lost his job in 1933, but he excels in the Nazi party and he <laughs> zealously, zealously applies his logistic skills to the mass genocide that would happen. Uh, he, res he expressed no remorse. During the trial, he said he regretted nothing. Wow. And yet, in recent weeks, you may have seen the headline, uh, a plea clemency letter was released where Eichmann said that he didn't consider himself a responsible leader and was therefore not guilty. Oh my gosh. And again, I think that the fact that we've, we're accustomed to the fact that we hear Holocaust survivors giving their testimony, prior to this trial that just wasn't happening for any variety of reasons. And we're very fortunate that we still have those stories now. Uh, one story comes from a local survivor, Erica Gold, who is a Maltz Museum volunteer, and she's told her story to countless young people throughout the area. And in one of the films, she says, we have to tell these stories of the Holocaust so that it never happens again. Oh, absolutely. Operation Finale, the capture and trial of Adolf, Adolf Eichmann is on exhibit now at the Maltz Museum of Jewish Heritage. My thanks to Jeffrey Allen for giving us a preview today. Learn more by calling the Maltz Museum of Jewish Heritage at 216-593-0575 or visit their website, www.maltzmuseum.org. Next, are Medicaid laws changing? Here at Metro Health, you know you matter when it matters most. Here, we are the city's best at preparing for the world's worst. Here, we are the only verified burn center in Ohio for adults and children. Here, you'll find exceptional clinicians with extraordinary hearts. So the work we do here at Metro Health makes an impact here, out here, and right here. Metro Health, we're here for you, for all of you. We've talked before on the show about the Medicaid program. It's the one governmental benefit that can help almost everyone with long-term care costs like the nursing home. The rules are harsh. And even in this election year, Ohio is changing the rules to make it even harder to become eligible. Here to discuss some of the changes is my ever-constant law partner, Mike Solomon. Hi, Lori. So a change has already happened in the Department of Medicaid, and this happened 
you know, how could it happen without a vote or something? Well, the, the Ohio Department of Medicaid is an administrative agency, and they can they can change these administrative rules without a vote. As a matter of fact, they tend not to give a lot of notice of these things, so it's kind of done, and all of a sudden it happens, and you mm. find out about it. Ugh. So what rule was changed? Well, the gifting rule, which has been in place since 2006, and, and we talked about this on the program before. So if someone gives away assets, they apply for Medicaid, they look back five years and they see if there are any gifts made. And if there are gifts made, then it causes a period of time that they can't qualify for Medicaid. So you know, let me give you an example. Okay. Let's say they give away $50,000, and you take the number right now at $6,327. That's what the uh, Ohio says cost of the annual cost of, of a, a monthly cost, cost excuse me, of a, of a long-term care facility. You divide that into 50000 that's eight months, and so you don't qualify for, uh, for Medicaid for an eight-month period, which is kind of the cost, they feel, of the 50000 you gave away. Okay, so what kind of planning could we use, do under the old rules? Well, in the old rules, what we would do uh, sometimes is, is we would do crisis planning. So someone might give away the $50,000, and then over a period of, let's say in this example, four months, they would give the money back and reduce that period of ineligibility. Now, that's confusing, so let me give you an example. Okay. They give away $50,000. That's the eight-month ineligibility period. Then over, let's say, four, four months, they give back $25,000. Mm -hmm. So now the ineligibi ineligibility period shrinks to four months. They happen to have just enough money to pay for the long-term care facility. They pay for it. They can then qualify for Medicaid after four months. Instead and that was of the having to wait the whole eight months. That's right. Okay, so it's sort of a rollback period. Yeah, but that won't work anymore. Oh, so that, that changed. What changed? changed? Okay, so now what they say is you've got to give it all back. You have to give all $50,000 back. And then once you get the money back, you're now eligible for Medicaid, but now you're not eligible for Medicaid because you have too much money. Of course. So, so it makes it a lot more complicated. Kind of cut 22. But are there still some planning options available? Well, there are, but it gets a lot more complicated and more expensive, and it's important that you deal with somebody who, who specializes in this area, someone who's certified for elder law, like yourself. They can, you know, they can look at the rules and figure out the answers to it. So it's, it's much more complicated. That happened now. Those mm -hmm. rules are in existence right now. And in July... They're making some more changes, and we're going to talk about that next week. Oh, my goodness. So, well, I'm glad there are some options left for those who plan ahead. Like Meg said, we're going to be back next week to discuss these additional changes coming in July. And also, uh, Solomon Steiner and Peck will be having seminars the week of March 13th to explain the rule changes. Um, you can see up on the screen where we're going to be and what days. For more information, call Mike at the number coming up next. Call Solomon Steiner and Peck at 1-888-236-5173 for more information or to schedule a speaker for your organization or log on to www.ssnplaw.com. Thanks for joining us on next week's show, Plan to Prepare the Perfect Easter Arrangement will help your ideas blossom. Then a magazine made just for us will peek at the pages of the upcoming issue of Boomer and Beyond. And we lose an hour when we spring ahead, but if you can find an hour, you could spring a new smile on everyone. We'll tell you how. But until then, please remember to make the most of your golden opportunities. If you'd like to join our kitchen conversation, visit our website, www.goldenopportunities.tv. Like us on Facebook. Call us at 440-742-GO-TV or email us at kitchen at goldenopportunities.tv. We'd love to hear from you. Golden Opportunities is paid for by Elder Productions.